Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching Swipe on the show this week. Robotic arms to augmented reality. We take a glimpse at the future of education. Appy Eater. Put a nutritionist in your pocket with a world first app. And we're chasing shadows in this week's games review. Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week we're at Bet15, a major event where education meets technology. Now, if computer science at school was a bit of a dry experience for you, I mean, for me, it was all about saving pie charts onto floppy disks. It's not like that anymore, though. Kids these days have tablets with numerous apps and even 3D printers in their classrooms. And that's just the start. Here's Will. When you hear the words computer programming, this might not be the first thing you think of. By using a coding language called Fuse Basic and a Raspberry Pi computer, these kids have learned how to control a robotic arm. I do um, enjoy computer work, but this just makes it extra fun. This might look like a game, but it's been designed for a good reason. Britain needs programmers, and technology like this could help to inspire the next generation. It's a very engaging device. You know, it's ideal for children. They can control a robot arm. That's a lot of fun. But actually, the message behind it is we can control a robot arm, which is a very complex device, using very simple, basic commands. Traditional classroom setups are also changing. Wisefloor has been designed to get kids away from the computer screen and make lessons more interactive. By using their feet, they're able to control the game being played out on the mat. But could augmented reality like this ever replace desktop learning? Mixed economies of learning work best, where children are given opportunities to work with textbooks, with iPads, where they're active, where they're in situations where they're moving, the better their learning is, the more rich and diverse and interesting it is, the more they're engaged and the more interested they become. Schools now have access to a huge range of teaching aids, so choosing the right option is crucial. And as the technology evolves, teachers have to move with it. Recent research showed that 130,000 English primary school teachers don't feel confident enough to teach their pupils how to code. And out of 250 teachers, 73% said they don't feel they've been given the right resources. So what's the government doing to help teachers get up to speed? We are partnering with organisations like um, O2 and, and Google and Microsoft in order to uh, help with that teacher training uh, and to really go in and help teachers with their uh, professional development so that they continue to have the skills so that they are able to teach students uh, the most modern technologies. Having access to different teaching methods can only be a good thing, but relying solely on technology is unlikely to be the answer. Will Sargent, Sky News. Well, along with plenty of education technology here at Bet15, there are also some parental communication systems. And one man we didn't expect to see here is uh, Sir Bob Geldof. Bob, hello. Hiya. Thanks for joining us. Um, now, tell me about Group Call and the system that you're here promoting today. Well, Group Call is a company that myself and my mates here started um, a few years back. And it was because um, you know, all my girls were going to school. I've suddenly become free this year because the last one left school, so free, free at last, you know. Oh, I don't have to go away every August now, I can go away any time. So, um, uh, he came with the idea of this mass texting, and as you can see from, I'm extremely high tech, but the one thing I do receive is texts, you know, and uh, because the girls were going to different schools, I was, I, you know, I wanted to know they got there, I wanted to know they were safe, I wanted to know what was going on. From that comes this huge thing, which works within the education system and glues it together and then moves outside that, completely for free of course. And it, and links, up, it links up parents, teachers and students. Absolutely. I mean the technology that we have is, is really evolving to sort of be, have a, sort of become a, a two-way conversation with um, parents and schools. What do you say to critics who believe that there are too many shiny gadgets being put in schools now and actually the money should be better spent on teachers' wages? What is clear 
is that uh, the, the ability of this thing to extend learning into the uh, poor parts of the world, the underdeveloped world, is essential, particularly for girls. And, um, you know, girls are often, as we've seen, uh, horrendously with those creeps um, over the last few years, you know, who try and prevent girls going to school. Once they have this thing at home, um, you know, then you're turning on two thirds of the, the workforce of, 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 of women in the world and the difference it makes, populations crash, economies grow, that's for sure. Would that happen through the old pen and pencil method uh, you know, of school learning? No. Do you still need teachers? Yes. Why? To point out what's important in what you're being shown. Later on, we'll review the latest mobile games, including the daring sheep with a crafty escape plan. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news. Microsoft has unveiled glasses that overlay holograms on the real world as the company launched its Windows 10 operating system. The HoloLens lets wearers interact with virtual objects, although it's not yet clear when it'll go on sale. Still struggling to stick to that healthy eating New Year's resolution? A new app called Happy Coach lets you take pictures of your meals and send them live to real nutrition experts to get approval or advice. It'll be available for pre-order next month. And London has held its first Mobile Games Week. The event included all sorts from networking activities to awards ceremonies with the goal of boosting investment in the capital's mobile game sector. And in honour of London's first Mobile Games Week, we decided to check out a few new games for your mobile and tablets. Here's Lucy. Shadowmatic is this great iPhone game. It's a great idea, first of all. It's sort of, it's basically the mobile version of making shadow puppets with your hands. And what it does is it presents this really abstract model. I say it's not very difficult, but it actually kind of is. Is you have to move this abstract model uh, until it casts a recognizable shadow. And it sounds easy, but these models are quite intricate and sometimes you really can't tell what it's supposed to be. And you know, there'll be things from like fish uh, and rabbits, you know, quite easy things to, you know, people doing judo and kettles. So there's a, a big wide range and it's just quite nice. It's quite a relaxing game. The music's very good. Um, and so it's nice just to while away, you know, car journey, just trying to figure out what exactly that shape is meant to be. It's very nice. So Adventure Time Game Wizard is, uh, you know, piggybacking off the popularity of the kids' cartoon. So there's a lot of different levels to it. There, there's the adventure mode kind of game where you play as the two main characters, Finn and Jake, and it's a side-scrolling kind of platformer. You've got a sword and you jump on platforms and things. And it's, it's got Weird Al in it, you know, as the as the evil antagonist and you know it's all fully voiced and things i'm drawing a video game so the antagonist um you you've somehow managed to grab his power in that you can make your own games but you can do it in two different ways so you can either use the in-game level builder which is quite nice it's very intuitive very very simple to use but i suppose this is a game for kids so it's quite nice and they can build their own levels but what you can also do is you can draw them and then use your Use your phone or iPad or something to scan them in and it'll make them in the game and then you can edit them in there. So it's both a game and a game builder. Do either of my game wizards need a pencil? Oh, I do. Okay, first you need to shave. <laughs> Block is, is from British Legends Team 17. So it was a PC game, came to consoles and now it's on mobiles. And it's kind of like lemmings, but with a really dark kind of Tim Burton twist. So you're shepherding sheep from the start of level to the end, and to get over gaps and things, you have to give them powers like the ability to jump or become a super sheep and fly at walls and things. But the thing is, if you fail or you miscalculate or you give the sheep the wrong, you know, the wrong power at the wrong time, they will die horribly. It's a great game, it's fun. It is just like playing Lemmings, it's very fun. There's a lot of content in there, there's a lot of different powers you could give the sheep. But it's so gruesome at the same time. Wow, look at that. <laughs> well, that's it for this week, but don't forget you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone apps, skynews.com, and our YouTube channel. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.
Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.